Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Uh, today I found this article titled 15,000 year old Idaho archaeology site now among America's oldest. So this is another pre-Clovis site that's been discovered in North America and it's being added to this growing list of pre-Clovis sites in in North America, the, the oldest being I think the Cerruti Mastodon site in San Diego, which I visited a couple weeks ago. And I have a few pictures of myself uh, with the bones in the display the display case that I'll probably post at some point. Also, Monte Verde, which is in Chile, um, the, the, the Bluefish Cave in the Yukon, and all these other sites that are being added to this list of, again, pre-Clovis sites that basically are 12,000 years or older, around there, 13,000 years or older, around there. Anyway, uh, the artifacts from the Cooper's Ferry site poke more holes in the traditional theory, basically the Clovis First theory, of when people arrived in the Americas. Uh, one of the oldest archaeological sites in the Americas has been discovered in western Idaho, according to a study published in the journal Science, a very prestigious journal. Radiocarbon dates show that people were creating tools and butchering animals in Cooper's Ferry between 15,000 and 16,000 years ago. So to give you guys some um, uh, back, some mixed here. So Cooper's here's uh, Western Idaho here. Cooper's Ferry is a, is along the Salmon River, which is a tributary to uh, the Columbia River here. And as you can see, you can see the ice-free corridor in this map on the top right here. And this is the Laurentide Ice Sheet and the Cordillerian Ice Sheet. And if you're familiar with the uh, the Clovis First model, they came through this uh, ice-free corridor uh, about 13 so years ago, and then they went through and made their way here. Um, the theory that's now gaining more steam is if you look on the left side of the map, this close this coastline here, um, these seafaring people who either came from Beringia, Siberia, parts of Asia, they surfed the coastline here, and then w when they got to around what's modern day Portland or Astoria, there's the mouth of the Columbia River that exits into uh, the Pacific Ocean. Well, the hypothesis is that they came through here and then they made their way inland and eventually to Cooper's Ferry. And again, the the theory pokes a hole in um, the Clovis First model, which we'll uh, keep continue right here. But uh, some of the oldest stuff at Cooper's Ferry, again, is aged between 15,000 and 16,000 years old. And we'll get into the details of that in a second. So if you don't know what Clovis First is, the Clovis First hypothesis is that the people who made these tools first entered North America on foot from Asia by ca crossing Beringia. And these tools, meaning these Clovis type of tools, which is a, a specific type of tool that that uh, dates to around the time of the Clovis people, which again is named after the Clovis site in New Mexico, which is why they're called Clovis culture. Uh, who knows what they call themselves? And then, as the article goes, has, um, the researchers started finding artifacts older than Clovis across America. So again, like Bluefish uh, Cave, uh, Cerruti Mastodon site, um, this place in Texas called uh, the Friedkin and uh, Galt site, uh, the Paisley Caves in Oregon, and so on and so on. And I think there's a there's a site in Florida, and they found some stuff in the East Coast as well. So again, there's stuff all over the place in the Americas that predate the Clo uh, the Clovis culture. And yeah, here's another one. Monte Verde is about 14,500 years old. The Fried Friedkin and Galt site that I just mentioned, 15,500, 16,000 years old. Paisley Caves, over 14,000 years old. I feel like a broken record. I I've said this like three times already, but you get the point. At the bottom of the bend in the lower Salmon River, this is where the Cooper's Ferry is. The indigenous people at the time were called the Nimipu which is also known as the Nez Perce, which is the indigenous people, again, referred, referring to the site as an ancient village called Nipehe or Nipehe or Nipehe. I'm not sure how to say that. Nipehe. Hey. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that, this is the ancestral name of the site, according to the indigenous people. The site was first ex excavated in 1997, and they found the stone points, which they dubbed uh, the, stem the western stemmed points, which become... Uh, very important later on, this guy, he's doing his PhD dissertation in 1997. He goes, he excavates these stemmed points. He radiocarbon dates some of the bone and charcoal in the area, which is buried in, in the, the same small pit. And he came up with dates 13,300 years old. So back in 97, that was unheard of. 
And so he returns 10 years later because the sight uh, stuck in his head for that long. And he wanted to know, uh, naturally, uh, if there are even older tools in the area, specifically older, to older than Clovis, uh, the Clovis culture. So when he came back, they found even more evidence of heat cracked rocks from ancient campfires, workspaces for, for making re and repairing tools, butchering sites, fragments of animal bone. And then they sent some more charcoal from a hearth that they found. Radiocarbon dated that and it came up with the 14,000 year old age range. So stuff keeps getting older and older. Um, and then they start digging even further and then they reach the deepest layer that they found of artifact filled artifact filled sediment was about a 15,000 16,000 year uh, age range so again in other words there's a sediment layer that dates to six, uh, 16,000 years old and they found stuff in there and that's the deepest that they found stuff so far um, anything deeper if they were to find some artifacts deeper than that then it would most likely be older than than this sediment layer here so now um, if you were to look at this on a map if you were to plot Let's see, if you were to plot everything on a map here, if you look at the U.S., um, the Yukon site is up here. And then there, there's a site in, or there's two sites in Oregon. And, and then there's this site in western Idaho. And then if you go down, there was a site at, in the Channel Islands off of uh, uh, California. The Ceridi Macedon site in San Diego. And then all the way down to Chile. Down here, there's a site here. So... What's the pattern here, guys? Well, it seems like these areas are dotting the west coast of both Americas. It's very interesting. Um, and it gets even more interesting. So, um, so Cooper's Ferry, again, is proof that people were already south of the ice sheets that once covered North America before the Ice Creek Free Corridor even existed, um, which was supposed to have opened up 14,000 years ago. So about 12,000 uh, BC. Uh, the, the first people to see the American continents were seafarers who paddled to the Pacific coast. This is the, the alternative uh, theory to Clovis I. Um, so the next question is, well, where did these people uh, come from exactly? Where did they start their journey if this is true that they came through boats, which is pretty much widely accepted now, especially in, in the wake of, uh, the, of this Cooper's Ferry thing. Um, and this guy says the most parsimo parsimonious explanation we can think of is that people came down the Pacific coast and as they encountered the mouth of the Columbia River, they essentially found an off-ramp from this coastal migration and f also found their first viable interior route to the areas that are south of the, and uh, past the ice sheet. So in other words, like I said earlier, these people can come down the coast. Some of them go through the Columbia River and inland. Others keep making the journey south, eventually passing uh, Channel Islands in California, Baja California, Mexico, um, Central America, and into South America. Um, that is the pre prevailing theory. And there's another, well, I think it's evidence, but, but there's still... Um, there's the jury's still out in terms of smoking gun evidence, but you guys be the judge here. It's very, and it has to do with the stemmed uh, tools, the stem points. So, um, so Cooper's Ferry uh, might hold evidence that this tool making technology develop, developed before uh, Clovis. Uh, well, it must have because it predates Clovis by 2,000 years. And the stem point technology represents the earliest technology in the Americas. So, they found very similar stone or stem tools in japan and in russia and uh specifically in hokkaido japan there's a site here near sapporo uh i forget the name of the site um i think it's called uh kashi what's it called yeah kami shiritaki so that's somewhere in the north the north uh, eastern part of Hokkaido up here and then they also found these stemmed points on this Russian island here this peninsula here uh, Kamchatsky so these two places have the same stemmed uh, tool technology and if they had boats let's let's just say for instance they started in Hokkaido and then they just went through th these chain of islands up through here spread left their culture or and their technology there crossed the bearings uh 
well, at the time it would have been the Barry Lambridge. Again, still on boats, right? Going through all the way down the West Coast. Well, the path is there, and it's possible for them to, to do it. Plus, they leave these stemmed tools, these stemmed points, kind of like a, a breadcrumbs, all the way down. So it's only a matter of time before they start finding more and more of these tools. And I would, if I had to hypothesize, uh, if they found one significant site, like uh, Cooper's Ferry that has an abundance of these, there's pro the odds are probably high that there's another site just like it featuring the same tools in the same sediment layer, which would mean at the same time. And again, these tools in Japan date about between 13,000 to 16,500 years ago. So it's right within that time range. Um, and here's some pictures. So the, uh, these points right here are the ones found in Japan on the left. And on the top right are the ones found uh, in the Americas. And you can see the very, very similar way that, that um, these are, are created. Uh, it's very interesting. And then here are some pictures of the actual site. This is Cooper's Ferry site near the banks. Of, this is the Salmon River, so it was along the banks here. Um, this is the map. This is the actual excavation site here. You can see it's pretty, pretty uh, meticulously uh, uh, studied, and it goes pretty deep. And th if they conceivably go deeper, there's probably more stuff there. And I'm not sure how deep they'll go, but I mean, it's the jury is out to how old everything could be there. Um, and then what this guy who uh, was conducting the the Hokkaido um, the Hokkaido excavations. He claims that the similarity is no coincidence. This is where you guys be the judge here. He suggests that the similar stone tool technology is evidence of a cultural link between the earliest Americans who arrived on the Pacific coast and migrated southward before moving inland south of the ice sheets, again, through the Columbia River, and people in northeastern Asia. So the dates line up well, obviously. I mentioned that earlier. The technology lines up. Um, their path is very obvious here, and the fact that they found some in Russia, this part of Siberia, is also very, very telling. Because if you were to uh, imagine this as like a jigsaw puzzle, well, Sapporo's there, this part of Siberia is there, the, Uk the Bluefish Caves are there, uh, parts of Alaska and Beringia are there, and then you have the ice, ice sheet here where, in which there's really not much, and then it picks up again in the Pacific Northwest, a couple sites in Oregon, now this West Idaho site, which is a lot more inland, which happens to be next to the the main river that connects to the Pacific. This is, again, think about waterways not as barriers, but as like freeways or conveyor belts. And then there's even one in the Channel Islands down here and in San Diego, and it just keeps going, guys. So the, the puzzle pieces are in place. It's just up to you to really see um, the forest for the trees, so to speak. Um, to see to see that the, the the bigger picture the the bigger implications here. So anyway, let me know what you guys think about this. I think it's very interesting, and I think it for the, if if you haven't been sold now, it pretty much closes the door on any chance of Clovis first being the actual model, the the people of the Clovis culture being the the pioneering civilizing people of the Americas. That's got to be put to rest. There's there are several migrations. And it's a lot more complex than just the Clovis first model. And again, this is a whole point of archaeology and paleontology and anthropology and the study of, of remote history and genetics and all of the, this, the things that come with all of uh, this, this area of study is the old paradigms are supposed to come down. They're, they're called models. They're there until something better is created. And, and there's just been an abundance of these new sites coming out that you have to amend the model and it shouldn't be a shameful thing. It should be embraced. We're getting that much closer to the truth. Uh, so anyway, let me know what you guys think and uh, I'll have the links below and I'll talk to you later.